What is going on, YouTube? I hope all is well and that you're having a wonderful week. We're moving along in a video series where I talk about building the best amp in the in the world. Uh, obviously, that is a very tongue-in-cheek uh, cliche, but because uh, we are not absolutely building the best amp in the world, but uh, we're building an amp that I think you'd be very happy with and uh, I think exceeds, uh, uh, I guess, expectations and performance and performance marks of, you know, some of the modern stuff these days. So, uh, be what it may, uh, it also dawned on me that, uh, some people don't have the tools necessary to build some of this stuff. Obviously, when you get your turret board in the mail, and you get your turrets, oops, excuse me, you get your turrets in the mail, obviously, you've got to find a way to attach these things to, to your turret board. Well, how do you do that? There's a couple different ways. One of the ways is to spend money and buy an actual tool designed to do it. Or what some people do is they go out and buy the uh, stake and anvil through Antique Electronic Supply or some other uh, source, which I will link in the description. Uh, speaking of which, let me get that real quick. I don't have the spare anvil out right now, but this is the stake here. It's still in the package. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not through this plastic, but I'll try to make it. You probably can't, but in either case, this is the stake. And then the anvil is this little piece, well, it's actually this piece right here, uh, which is just a round tube that the top of the turret will fit into. Um, so we're going to talk about what this is and how to make this become a more... Uh, usable tool. So with this stake here and the anvil, uh, what you basically have is, a, is something that you can hit the turret against and then you can use this with a hammer and pound it in. The problem with that is, is it's kind of a, a cumbersome task to hold the turret board up with this, you know, this little pin sticking up underneath it or in this case it would be upside down so you'd have the anvil underneath on a table or some other hard surface and then you take this guy and you slam it home and that would swedge let's see if you can see it there you'll swedge that thing out so it compresses into the board making this not be able to fall out um, hammering them is just fine it's probably the cheapest method to do uh, some turret staking but uh, there's also another cheap method here that I'm going to show you this is from Harbor Freight Harbor Freight for the win they have a lot of random things that just kind of work, if you will. So this is actually a watch um, case removing tool. And son of a bitch, why are you calling me right now? I'm busy. All right, uh, where was I? Okay. I don't like phones, by the way. So when they ring, I get upset. Sorry. Um, and if I know you and you call me and I say that out loud, because I probably will, I apologize in advance. I will talk to you if I want to. In either case, this is a watch uh, uh, face or uh, case removing tool. Uh, I think they go for about 14 bucks at Harbor Freight. Pretty cheap. I mean, this is the cheapest answer I've come with. with. Uh, obviously, you can use a drill press if you want. Uh, if you already have a drill press, that's great because then you can just mount the anvil in something, uh, in something on the press. Excuse me, this is the anvil here. Uh, you can mount the, it in something on the press, and then you just take this part and put it in the uh, chuck, if you will, and then slam it home. Or you take this for about 13 bucks and press out or punch out the little inserts that are in there. There's one in the top and the bottom, and yes, it came out rusty just like that. <laughs> so they've got like this little collet, if you, if you will, that holds in the little plastic dies that they have. So this little collet right here is just pressed into the base here of the of the case watch press, if you will. And same with this thing up here. So it's just pressed in there. On this one down here, you just simply use a punch and then you can pop this part out of the bottom. And that's exactly where this one came from is the bottom of this press here. So you just use a punch and you punch through there and this will pop out. Um, there's generally not much more you need to do. The size of the stake and the anvil happen to be a perfect fit for whatever size hole that is in the that is in the bottom of the the press. 
The top one is a little more difficult to get out because you can't really take this thing apart. They've got these things all peened here, so you can't really just take it apart. So what I had to do was take this and press it out and then drill through the bottom to get this to come out. So you may or may not need to do that. Um, I went with the anvil, uh, the part with the hole, and you'll see when you buy the kit. So the part with the hole, I put on the top, so that way this is, uh, the, the stake is on the bottom. And we'll show a little bit more about that in a minute. But if you press this whole thing out or punch the whole thing out, not a big deal. Just as long as you can get these out of both sides, and a quarter inch drill bit will do that. Um, I would start with a smaller bit first and then go up to quarter inch, by the way. So go with a 16th inch, because uh, you'll probably have to break on the top those little collet pieces, you're probably gonna have to break them out or you can just use something to swedge them out so they'll they'll be in there and you just swedge them out so you can get a drill bit in there. It is hollow on the bottom, so once you break those little things away, God, if I can get it in the camera view, uh, once you break those things away, obviously there's a hole in the bottom. This is the exact size as this, which is very, 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 very convenient. So. By the time you can get this out, this will fit right in there. You will have to cut this to the desired length. Um, what I did down here was I just came up with a, a number. I saw how far in it could go and then cut it. And then you can put it in there. If it doesn't stay put on its own uh, friction, because uh, it's not exactly a press fit, but if it doesn't, you can use super glue or some other, uh, what's that green glue that they use to adhere metal? Uh, you'll see them in, in those like hobby ASMR videos all the time where they use like this green something or other and it's, it's for bonding metal to metal. But in either case, that's beside the point. So once you get this built, you'll have the anvil on the top, which you'll also have to cut to a size. Um, I don't think it'll work at full length. Um, so not cut to a size, excuse me. You'll have to shim it to stick out as much as you want. I kind of left it a little shallow. I would probably leave it a little bit longer and that'll help you work around these turrets a little bit more. God, if I can keep from dropping stuff. It'll help you work around the turrets a little bit more. Um, and you kind of can see what I mean by when you press this in there, there's not a much, not a bunch of room between these things. It's only 3 8 inch spacing, spacing, which this thing is about 3 8 of an inch. So it, it works, but yeah, I would leave this, I would leave that just a little bit longer. And then, of course, you can press this down much further if you wanted to. Or you can cut it down much further if you wanted to. I did something that worked for me. And you can see here that they align quite nicely. So I got lucky. All right. So what does this cost you? Well, here's the interesting thing. The press costs about 13 14 bucks. The steak kit costs about the same. So 30 bucks, all in, shipping, whatever. You've got yourself a pretty decent turret, um, turret press for pretty low money. All right, so the hardest part is probably, <laughs> we're gonna go over this in another video, but the hardest part about making this turret layout is uh, the actual getting it to print to the full size. So you know you've done good with your print when you can set your turret board on top of your, on top of your printout and it's the exact same size. And I don't know if I'll be able to show this in a million years, but, um, let's see if I can get this thing to line up, but obviously, I mean, that's pretty much within a gnat's ass there, if you, if you don't mind me saying, but, uh, it's good enough. So obviously lengthwise, it's the same as well. So you can see here, this is quite right. Let's see if I can show the holes lining up here as well. So obviously your turrets are going to line up with those holes there. So they all line up like they're supposed to. So when you're looking on your thing here, you're looking for the spots there where you're going to put your turrets. So you're going to take this guy here, you'll put your pin in, it doesn't matter really where you start, but you need to know what side you want to be top, what side you want to be bottom. I'm going to go ahead and make this side the top, and then we'll take this guy, and you go, okay, it needs to go right there. So you take this guy, first row, you know it goes right there. And then, as simple as this, you take this guy, right here you push up into your anvil and as you push down you just crunch and you'll feel it it just gives like a little crunch give it a nice squeeze 
that is now a permanent attachment to the uh, to the to the turret board. No wiggle, nothing at all. Perfect. And it's that quick, that simple. So double check your work. Make sure you got it in the right hole. I did. So obviously you can do more if you want. I'm only going to show you the one for now because I need to save some content for the next video in the series that's coming up. But I just wanted to show you a quick way that you could turn a cheap project into something useful. Uh, obviously that would be much quicker than hammering these things home. If you have a drill press, you can do that already. But this one is nice. You can attach it. It's got some screw holes down here so you can attach it to a piece of wood. And you can make it you know, something you can do at will. I find that it's easy enough, just how it is, to do it by hand. So you can just kind of do what you got to do, but totally up to you. Anyway, thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.